What up, buddy? Yo, what's How up? How are you? I'm good. I'm very excited. I uh, I showered for this podcast. No, even you though did not. you I don't did. shower. Even though That's this is crap. over Streamyard, over a Zoom, I, I showered for this podcast because we have Adrena coming on. Adrena, who uh, if you watch The Hills, she's a legend on there. She's a legend on MTV reality shows, and uh, I'm very curious. I mean, she's the the fact that she's been like famous since like we were in high school, dude. Yeah, like that show was so massive. I remember like Ryan Seacrest bumping like an interview with Britney Spears to talk to Kristen Cavallari. Like that's how big the Hills was back in the day. Yeah, this uh... and 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 the, and that's been re- resurrected because so many people love the show. Yeah, no, I'm excited to talk to Adrena because I'm a fan of the show. So it's cool to talk to some a show that you're a fan of and someone who I actually feel like I kind of grew up with uh before we get to her dex i saw on your instagram you were at a concert recently tell me about this concert i was I, I i got a ticket to the the global citizen vax live concert i don't know if you have seen anything I or heard anything all the celebrities posting about it but yep. first off how did you get the ticket so i actually got the ticket through someone i know because of trophy smack my my company okay. and so it wasn't even in the like entertainment world dude the suite I got was so sick. It was like center, this beautiful, and keep in mind, it's at SoFi Stadium, which is the like the most expensive stadium in the world that's ever been like created. And it's amazing. It's beautiful. This is the first big like event that they've had inside the stadium. So like when I'm sitting down in the chair, it's like the first person to sit their ass in the suite chair. It was really cool. Uh, but no, the stadium is out of control, except I couldn't take any photos. It, really? The, so they, they yeah, say because, you can't take any photos? Well, because the, the taping hadn't air, been aired yet. And, you know, it just aired the other day, but they hadn't aired it. So your phones had to go into these like pouches that were sealed oh, closed. Okay. Yeah. And so you'd go to designated area where they open it up and you could use your phone, but you, you couldn't use it the whole time. You couldn't take photos, couldn't take videos, like nothing. So I'm in this amazing, amazing stadium. And all this stuff is happening. J Lo's performing. J Balvin's performing. Prince Harry was there, like, wow. just like right there. And I like I can't document any of it. And you knowing me, yeah. I love the social media thing, so it was just like <laughs> killing me inside. So but, who was the best performer? Uh, I mean, J Lo was awesome, but the Foo Fighters knocked it out of the park. Wow. So J Lo so puts Foo on. Fighters, that's sick, dude. And what they didn't air was. The Foo Fighters did like a full concert afterwards. So, you know, they did their taping for the show. And then because they were the last people on stage, they just went. They went for like an hour after the Sick. concert thing was done. And they just kept going, this is a rock show now. And, and and I think that Dave Grohl was just so excited to be back on stage after like a year yeah. of not being able to perform in front of people. That him being in a stadium and like 30 or 40,000 people, however many were in there, it was just going nuts. And I think he was like getting fueled up by all that energy and he just wanted to keep going and going and going. So that I think was like the coolest part about it. That's so cool. And, and, uh, and seeing Prince Harry, I mean, it's kind of cool. Not someone you see every day, you know what I'm sure. saying? <laughs> was there any other celebrities in the suites scenario? Did you see any other people there? I heard Will Smith and Jada were there. Um, I didn't like see any other celebs. I mean, Selena Gomez hosted it. Olivia Munn was there. Chrissy Teigen was there. There were some funny moments where like Selena would mess up like what she was saying and they'd have to re-record and she kept getting kind of embarrassed. She'd be like, ah, fuck, I got to do this again. Like I'm embarrassing myself. Like yeah. JLo, if, if, if you saw it the other day, she, in one of her performances, she like had her hands up in the air like this. She held that pos- position for like 10 minutes. And it was because Selena Gomez was messing up her her lines and then Chrissy Teigen messed up her lines. And so she was just like holding this like starting position to start the the show that she it it was funny because Selena was like, God, it's so embarrassing. I keep messing up in front of J-Lo. It was just it was it was cool to see the behind the scenes stuff that was happening. Uh, Before we get to Adrena, we like to leave a review. We like to read a review on this podcast. It's the best thing to do to support this podcast. If you leave a review, we'll re- we'll read it live on air and uh, with these with the algorithm of podcast, it really helps us out. Just leave us five stars, say a few kind words and we'll say your name or or, read it on or air. not kind words but five stars we're down with. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I don't care. You can put give me the blood code for Mortal Kombat. I don't care. You can do whatever you want. Just give us five stars. Uh, Dax, uh, do you got a review today? 
Yeah, and I actually said that because the review today says, so, question mark, at 20 minutes in, Dale, as in Dale Moss, I'm really not going to speak about that or speak about for, for, uh, speak for Claire, laugh out loud, with 38 minutes left. So what else is it going to talk about? But make your money, guys. Yes, we made some money, guys. <laughs> yeah. No, honestly, that was the best interview. I loved it. He was so honest. Everyone talked cool. about it. So if you're going to hate on the podcast, you can't do it on one of our most successful interviews. I mean, that one was by far one of our most successful Listen, ones. Listen, we had hundreds, thousands of press articles from that. So that was actually good. But you know what? Listen, we did, we did our due diligence of asking the questions and he answered them in his way. And listen, we broke a lot of we news. Got, there. We got and a lot that, out. And he was great. Say, say what you want. He he said I he he had his way of answering the questions that was perfect. And yes. people responded very well to them. All right. Let's yes. let's move on past that. Feel free to keep submitting questions or reviews. We love them. We love reading them. Whether or not they're critical or not, we appreciate them. Yes. Dax, tell us about our guest today. Our guest today is an actress, a reality star, who always keeps it interesting on MTV's The Hills. Please welcome Audrina Patridge. So, Audrina, thank you for coming on the podcast. Uh, you are in L.A., correct? Is, is everyone moving out? You're going to stay there, or what's your deal? I mean, I'm in Orange County, so it's like 40 minutes to an hour from LA. I'm staying here in the OC. I feel like Orange County is its own little bubble. Of its own. Room. That's right, it is. <laughs> Hell yeah, go Orange County. Is that where you're at? Yeah, I'm in Orange County. I'm I'm Anaheim Hills area, so uh, oh, I love it. I'm like 10 to 15 minutes from you. Oh yeah, are you? Yeah. I guess I'll ask you later, but that's yeah, really I'll cool. Ask you later. <laughs> <laughs> How do you that's... like OC? Like, what what brought you to the Orange County? I mean, I was I was raised here, so my whole family lives down here between here and L.A. Um, well, I moved to L.A. a whole 40 minutes away when I was 18, and then I moved back down here when I got pregnant um, just to be closer to my family. So I just commute when I have to for filming. That's awesome. Have you been to Disneyland yet, by the way? No, not yet. <laughs> oh, well, not the, since it's reopened. <laughs> I, yeah. I'm just taking every opportunity to brag because I know how much Adam loves Disney World and Disneyland. So I keep rubbing it in. And I got to be one of the first people back in the park oh, and fantastic. have absolutely no lines. And it was amazing. So do you do you just get tested before and show your negative results? No, or how does they that work? they no no because Disneyland's all outside, so they're not oh. they're not asking for test results or anything like that. They just all the lines are now outside of the rides, and they kind of wind through the park in different areas. Uh, but it was the the dream like oh. going to Disneyland. There was you just walk on every ride. It was the greatest thing. Twenty five percent capacity was. Oh my gosh! But you have to make reservations. I'm sure there's a long. I, Andrea, I'm pretty sure you could get in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, so. I just think of myself as a normal person. Like, I don't, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can pull some strings, I am sure. Yeah, I'll make a few phone calls, see what I can do. I love it. Sorry, Adam. I, you can get back no, to the I mean, now. I just wanted to rub it in. <laughs> Dax is so excited about Disneyland. So how does the OC compare to LA? Like, do you think you'll stay in the OC forever? Do you think you'll eventually go back to LA? Or what's your... I feel like LA right now is not a good place. I feel like, I mean, I was just up there probably a month ago. I was driving to the Roosevelt past like where Ledoux used to be, where we used to go in the old hills. And it's just, it's so sad. All the homeless you see there and crime and like everything is a different world up there now. And I just feel like for me personally, Orange County and growing up here, with my daughter, it's a cleaner, better, like more family oriented place. And it's more laid back and more beach vibe. Like I don't have to plan when I'm going to the grocery store. When I lived in LA, I lived up in the, and I have to plan the time because all the traffic just to go to Gelson's. But here I could do like 10 errands in a day and I'm good. <laughs> See, Adam, it's the best down here, dude. I'm telling you. And you know what? I like my wife can go out for a run, and I don't have to worry about her while she's gone. It's it, everything is safe. It's wonderful down here. So yeah. all you LA people, stay in LA. <laughs> Do you run Actually, into anyone? A lot of people are coming. 
coming down here from LA. Shh, don't say that, Audrina. I know. Uh, <laughs> now, do you run into any celebs? Because people always ask me. They just assume, hey, you're in California. You run into celebs. Do you ever run into anyone in Orange County? In Orange County, I run into a lot of the like OC housewives in Newport and like Laguna. Um, and then like people from the show, like my show, we all hang out, right? Run into them. Um, but like, I don't know anyone outside. I mean, where I live, I guess Chuck, Chuck Norris has a house up here in Tiffany. And um, there's a lot of producers that live Tiffany from the 80s. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it is like this area. It's like a little, you know, and a lot of producers live down here. There's one down the street from um, Capitol Records, from Extra. So it's like everyone just sucks it up and makes the drive to LA, but I haven't yeah. really ran into any like big celebs. Just like, have you seen Chuck Norris? No, but now I'm on my eye. I'm on the lookout. <laughs> yeah, right. House. Like, he's around one. here somewhere. <laughs> you know, what that reminds me of, cause we're talking houses. You uh, famously got hit up by the bling ring, right? I mean, that was an LA thing. That was a huge story back in the day. You know what did they end up taking, and how did you, how did you know that it was them? I mean that they well, were the big ring at the time, but how did you know? So my ad cameras, my cameras were the ones that caught them, um, and I knew because I had just gotten back from I think I was I co-hosted a music award show in Australia from TV there, and I just got back, and I remember it was around one of the award shows in January and I hadn't even unpacked yet. I left everything on the floor. I went out, I posted where I was at and that's how they knew I wasn't home. Cause on Twitter then it's like, that's how they found out like who was home and where they were at. So they knew I wasn't there when I got home. I went to wash my face and my suitcase was open and I couldn't find my, my makeup bag or, and I was like, this is, I feel like I'm losing my mind. Like, if I go in my closet and my jewelry's gone, someone's been in my house and that's how it started. And then my laptop was gone, my passport, you know, they, they literally went shopping through my closet. They took bags and loads of, of like products and like everything, like it was crazy. So then I looked on my cameras and that's when I saw the two kids at my door. And then you see them walking in and out carrying trash bags and suitcases of stuff. That was wow. such a wild time, just like everyone getting hit up, like celeb after celeb. It was really yeah, crazy. I know. Did yeah, you? I never uh, got anything back. You no. never got anything back. Nothing. Or so, paid. what do they do in that situation? Like, you know, like they found the people. Then do they ask them, "Hey, where is the stuff that you stole?" They, I guess, it was in Vegas in a storage, but then they were selling it. So I don't oh. know what they did with it. But I know they went to jail and did Was there anything in there that was like something you were like, damn, the one thing I wanted back out of everything they stole was what? You know, I think for me, it was a couple of rings my mom gave me that she had when she was in her, like beautiful rose gold and like really cool just rings. And they took those rings and they also took a vintage Chanel watch my Aunt Connie gave me. So, um... Yeah, those things like from my family, they're passed down. Like that's what that's what sucks. But anything else, the clothes, the products, like that's whatever. I yeah. don't care about that. <laughs> so let's start from the beginning. Before the hills, what were you doing? You're like, how did you get on the show? What were you trying to get into? What was your goal? Where, 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 where were you in life? Um, before, so I was 18. I was going to night school in Orange County at OCC. And I kind of had to make a decision. Am I going to move to LA and just pursue acting? And I was doing modeling. So I was driving there in the day, going to night school. So I had to make a decision, moved up there, was laying out at the pool. And that's when Adam DeVello discovered me because he was looking for an apartment for Lauren and Heidi and LA friends for them to have. Um, so that's kind of how it started. I went, met with them, got on camera, and we filmed two weeks later. Yeah, walk us through this like casting process. So he sees you at the pool, and then it's like, hey, do you think you could be friends with Lauren? Do you think you could be friends? Well, like, he just how does liked that, that I, I was a receptionist at Coyote Studios. I already had my nights out. I had my established LA group of friends and models and actors and promoters and like where I go on Thursday nights and Monday nights. So 
they liked that and the fact I worked at a photo studio with celebrities and models. Um, sorry, I don't want my phone to die. I keep <laughs> moving this. Um, so that's kind of how it started. And then I didn't know Lauren at all. There, she just said there was these two girls moving to LA from Fitum and it was a spinoff from Laguna Beach. And they, you know, they'd love to have me come in and talk with them on camera and I just went in there and answered all their questions and me and Whitney were casted as their first two LA friends. Now, were you, did you watch Laguna Beach? Like, were you no. a fan of that show? No, no, not no. at all. So did so you I end had up? no idea what I was getting myself into. So you didn't even like, hey, I'm gonna go watch it and try to catch up before I start filming with these girls? It was just no, like, throw nothing. yourself in? I just knew it was a reality show and I said, this will be a good experience for me to get comfortable in front of the cameras and direction and, you know, it'll help with my acting. So that's kind of what I thought um, going into it. So the job you had at the studio, that was a real job. That was a real job. See, that's the thing I struggled with as as a viewer. It was like I didn't know what was real and what wasn't. Like when Heidi worked at uh, – for the PR company, Bolt House. I was like, is that a real job? And I think when you read the reports now, it wasn't a real job. That part was yeah. kind of put in there. So I think I in the very beginning, that. mine, it was real. Cause I had to make a decision. Cause my boss was like, Adrena, we get you're doing this show, but we need a receptionist. So you're gonna have to pick and choose. So then Adam DeVello got me, I loved music and I was going to shows every night. And I used to work out of music, uh, place um, here in Orange County when I was 17. So I had music background. So then he got me a job in A&R helping at Epic Records. So that was, I made the transition because then the show had more leverage of when I could film and when I didn't have to film. They were kind of in charge of that. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. Yeah, we, I think what Adam said, like, hits it on the point. It's like, we didn't really know what was real and what wasn't. I mean, I think MTV did such a good job of like commingling them, but like were fights, were hookups, that stuff was real, right? I mean, sometimes I even catch myself and I'm like, wait, are is this fake or real? Like, are you really mad at me or is this for the scene? Like, you know, <laughs> I don't even think we know what's fake and real sometimes. Um, but we like to be on the same page. Um, but yeah, it's a little tricky at times. There are, there was a fight Kristen and I got into over Justin. That was not real. Um, so there are situations where we, it's TV, it's entertainment. There's definitely real moments and real emotions, but you do step it up at times when you need to. So did you actually live with Lauren Conrad? I did. Okay. And, and what, yeah, where does your guys' relationship stand now? Do you guys talk or no? Um, you know, after the finale, no one's really talked to her at all. I ran into her at Disney on Ice um, two Decembers ago, and she was with her son, and I was with my daughter, and we just caught up for a minute and, like, introduced each other to our kids and, like, asked how we were doing, and that was it. I feel like Lauren's just in a totally different place now. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, so there's no chance, like I was here with the, the new beginnings, there was no even conversation of maybe her kind of coming back to the show or she's just past that. She's on a I think chapter. Lauren's so past that. Like she's, I see how busy she is with all of her, you know, all of her teeth or not TV stuff, all of her clothing lines and at Kohl's and all the, all of that, but never say never. I don't know. Maybe I know she has two kids now. Yeah. You know, she's happily married, and it, it just really depends. Like, jumping back into it does kind of bring a lot of stress into your life that you don't normally have because there's a lot of drama and confrontation and opinions, and, like, people are talking about you behind your back, and you find out. And it's stuff that I don't normally deal with outside of the show, but when I'm on the show, it's like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Okay, so that's a great question. So why did you decide to sign back up to do this? If, if it does have that stress that comes along with it, I mean, I guess there's also a lot of perks that come along with it, but why did you say, yes, let's do it again? There's a lot of perks. You know, it's kind of, I've done it since I was 18. It's kind of all I know. It's like muscle memory. We jump back in and it just like, you just start doing it. You get right into it. But it's also just being around like, Brody, Heidi, Spencer, Justin, like our whole group, we've all been through so much together on the show and just with the world judging and like 
whatever, you know, that nobody else will ever understand but us. So we have that with each other. Um, and also it's like, it's a job, you know, it's, I mean, I, I was on first look on NBC, but this, it's just kind of like, yeah, it's stressful at times, but we're all in this together. Usually it's a few months of filming, but lately it's, you know, with COVID, it was drawn out over a year. Um, but you just deal with it. You know, it's a TV show and not to take things personal. And it's, it's just a lifestyle that is all I know. So, you know, you, you brushed on it earlier in regards to, hey, do I make acting a full-time career? What do I do? You know, you're on this, well, you start on a huge show. So where everyone's kind of confused, is it real? Is it fake? So clearly the acting is good. All right. So the acting passed. Do you ever want to try to do something else in acting or no one's going to take you to that level because you've been on MTV, this reality type show? See, that's where it's like a fine line because I have, I've done few, a few things in different movies, Scary Movie 5 and like Into the Blue 2, Sorority Row, and I loved it. It's a whole different world. Um, and I would do more of it. It's just... It's so hard to explain what this show is because it, there is a lot of realness to it, but it's also very guided and manipulated at times. Um, but you just put your, it's like improv acting basically at yeah. times, but you're also expressing how you truly feel and you're being put in real situations where they're just like, boom, okay, get the cameras up, see what happens. So do you feel though that like directors may not look at that as necessarily like the acting for like a, an academy award-winning movie or something because again i go back to it was good acting because we all got sucked into it you know what yeah, i'm saying exactly we, we don't know the difference we're like is that real is it what's going on so i i think you're a good actress you know but again oh, is thank it... you i mean there's definitely you amp it up at times when you need to but i mean you know what's real and fake you kind of watch it yeah. and you'll see the emotions are in the eyes are like, I don't know. Then again, maybe I'm watching it from a different perspective. Cause I'm no, I, I'm literally just asking, cause we talk to a lot of actors or reality stars that are like, we get pigeonholed. Like we do one show that does really well. And it's like, people can't get that out of their heads when they go yeah. to cast for something else. And they're like, it's really frustrating. I want to try something else. I want to get into comedy. I want to get into this. And they're like, it's so fucking frustrating being in this industry. Yeah. I feel like this, I'll always be Audrina from the Hills kind of thing. Even when I did first look at NBC, actually people started knowing me and recognizing me as the first look host. Mm -hmm. Good show, by the way. I know I was, I saw bananas the other day. That's a great show. What a fun, uh, that's like the best gig too. Like a small oh, crew. Yeah. You just do fun, cool stuff. I mean, it's, I, in my opinion, it's not too much stress because you're just doing cool stuff every oh day. Oh my, it was the best. I did it for what, two years? It was the yeah. best two years of my life. It was yeah, so you much. You just travel fun. and do cool shit. It's, it's, yeah. they're, they're like the new wild on host sort of thing, you know? It's, yeah, uh, I know. And it's a small crew and it's just, you're meeting all these people and learning all these new things. And it's, I loved it. I don't think I could do it again because of the travel. I would never be home, but yeah. I'm definitely glad I experienced that. Can I tell you a funny run-in that I have, a, a memory that I have of you? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great. This is, I told Adam this the other day because it was so funny. It just it popped into my mind. So I was at uh, Weenie Roast a couple years ago, and you were also there down in like Irvine at the amphitheater before they got rid of it or whatever. Yeah. And and so we were both backstage, and, <laughs> and I remember – there was like a row of like 20 porta potties. Do you remember? Yes. And I remember I had had a couple of beers and I look over and you needed to go to the bathroom. And I remember you <laughs> opening up one of the porta potties and you literally screamed and slammed the door. <laughs> and then you went to the next porta potty, you open that, you're like, no! Floor, and you went through like five or six porta potties. And I was dying laughing. I was like, this is the greatest moment. And like, I'm the only one like thinking this is hilarious because I don't know if anyone like, noticed what was happening, but like that moment stuck in my brain because it was so freaking funny oh and God. it was just like exactly what I think would happen. Like grossed out, nasty porta potty, not a chance. I'm not going in. Yeah, I don't even remember. I think I eventually went in one. Oh yeah, you, you went in one and then I was over. Yeah. But it was 
it was really funny just watching you like slam and scream at every single <laughs> porta potty. I know. I miss those days <laughs> of going to shows and oh. especially the heroes. And that that amphitheater was amazing. It sucks yeah. that it's gone now. Yeah. So how did you meet Justin Bobby? Like, how did he get on the show? So I met him when I was the receptionist at Coyote Studios. And he was there. He did hair. He was assisting on a Stephen Maisel shoot from Madonna. And he kept walking in front of my desk back and forth and kept asking for magazines, for this, for that. And then he eventually, before he left, gave me his number, wrote it on a piece of paper, and said he would love to do my hair. And I was like okay, I need my hair done. So I called him and he did my hair and then we started hanging out and it just became something more. He actually filmed with me on first season um, for one scene and he felt so awkward that he's like, I can't do this, this is not for me. And then we were still hanging out, cut to third season and he's like, okay, now I see how you're going. Like, I think I can do it now. So then he came on third season. That's so cool. It's cool just to be able to like, get your friends on to something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, that's really cool. Did they have flexibility with that? Like if you're like, Oh, I met this really cool person. I think they're awesome. I think they'd be a good addition to bring on. Like, yeah, they used to have way more flexibility. Um, They still do a little bit, but just because of COVID and everything, there's more restrictions. Like this whole second season has really just been the group of us together Mm -hmm. and you know, we're not, we're going to each other's backyards and houses and like renting out hotels and rooftops where it's just the cast um, because of all the restrictions. Uh, so it's not like we can go out and meet new people or like what we used to do or go to restaurants. And um, it kind of forced us to confront each other on a lot of things from the past. So Misha Barton, she wasn't with, she wasn't hanging out with you guys before, uh, you know, she's not in the, is she on the new season of New Beginning? No, no? she was not. just on the first one. So the first season, was she kind of just the producers like, hey, listen, me should be really cool. Let's kind of bring her into the mix. And you guys start hanging out with her. I, and- you know, I don't really know how that happened. I think because she was on the OC and it was that whole generation when the Hills was on in the OC. So they thought having her come on would be a good idea but it was kind of like shell shock you know she never watched the show she didn't know the history she didn't know the dynamic of our friendships or who's with who and who doesn't get along and she comes from movies so she was kind of like this is so different like i don't even know like who why why are you fighting over this or you know it's kind of like what it was so opposite from what she was used to so do you guys talk to her at all anymore or was it like she's gone done um, I haven't talked to her recently. Every now and then we'll be in touch on Instagram, but that's about it. And, and how is your relationship with the cast as a whole? Are you guys, do you guys hang out even when cameras are off or like you save yeah. that for work hours? No, usually when we're done filming, we'll all hang out after and just vent to each other, talk to each other, have fun with no cameras, um, which is nice, but we're all kind of spread out. So um, it's harder, especially, you know, a lot of us have kids and like all the DJ gigs are starting to pick up again. So I know Brody's going to Mexico. Caroline's been going and traveling places, too. So whenever we are together, we like to actually embrace it and like hang out. So I was we uh, we got um, Spencer. We called him the other day in the middle of a podcast and he was feeding his hummingbirds Mm -hmm. like (laughs) it's crazy hummingbirds. What did what did you think back in the day when Heidi and Spencer were like utilizing the media to their advantage? I mean, Adam and I loved every second of it, but what did you guys think of all of that? You you know, doing these setup photo shoots and being over the top. What was your opinion? Um, to each his own. I feel like good for them. Like they are fearless and they don't care what people think, and they embrace embrace it. And sometimes they'll cheese it up, and it's just. It's so Heidi and Spencer, you know, that's their personality and they just go all out and there's, they're just so funny about it. They don't care. They're just like, yeah, we did. We love to be famous. You know, they own it. So it's really, it's, it's cool that I admire that they're like that. I can never do that because it's not my nature, but like seeing (laughs) them, it's really like, they're brave. We thought Spencer, like, we just thought was really intelligent when it came to his moves with that because they're very, uh, 
they were very thought out. Well, they were ahead of their time. That's what we said. Ahead of their time, because we see what the stars are doing now. Like, dude, Spencer was the one who was doing that way before everyone else, and he, yeah, you know, he he was very intelligent when it came to that. You know, yes, especially the over the top cheesiness. Like, I feel like that's what everyone does on social media these days to get people to talk about him. And he, like, he was literally doing that ages ago, ages ago. Yeah, I know. And they're still so good at social media and Heidi's so good at TikTok and just getting people out of their comfort zone. And like, you know, they're always filming and like, they're just so good at it. I suck at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I watched the, the trailer for the new season. You, uh, you kiss Brody Jenner. Was it a full kiss? Was it a makeout kiss like with tongue or was it just for TV? Like where see, you guys- this is what we talked about on the show. I can't give it up because everyone will have to watch and see. It was a kiss, but there are different kinds of kisses. And that was my point. Everyone tried to make it out to be, well, I can't really say, but um, gotcha. that's definitely talked about on the show. Okay. Well, is Brody Jenner a good kisser? He's a good kisser. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Would you do it again? When- yeah. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> But when a kiss comes out like that, you know, is that like for the producers? Is that for you guys put on a TV show or you guys sort of like that wasn't on that wasn't on TV. Our kiss was off TV. There is no cameras. Um, But there are certain scenarios where there, you know, was a kiss with someone else that was for TV kind of thing. which those are the moments. There's going to be some awkward moments to watch because they didn't feel natural. It was kind of unnatural and felt awkward even doing it. So now I can only imagine what it's going to look like <laughs> on TV. So I'm not watching it. <laughs> Is there a moment that you think back in your Hills history that you were like, you remember the scene and it was just like, you just cringe. Like, and you people have like talked about it for years or anything. Just you're like, oh God. Yeah, a lot of it was like the me and Justin thing, how I kept going back to him. But Towards the end of that, I had a boyfriend off camera, but then on camera, I was filming like we were still like battling. So that was really hard to swallow because at the time I couldn't say the truth or what the scenario was. So that's made it hard. That's actually super interesting. How did your boyfriend at the time, how did he process that? Because to the world, you're dating someone else, but like you guys go out to dinner and now it's like, yeah. It's going to start rumors that you're cheating, like the whole thing. Well, no, this was towards the very end with Kristen. So it wasn't like we were together together, Justin and I. But my boyfriend at the time, he he was in the industry. He understood it. He got it. And like, I would literally go do the scene and leave. So it was, there was like nothing really there to worry about. Mm. I I just meant the public perception of it where the world thinks you're with someone else, but... You he just boyfriend. didn't care. We never, we never looked into the press or read the blogs or the magazines. It's like we just kind of stayed away from all of that. So fascinating. When you guys came back and the Hills kind of came back last season, not this new season, or even maybe the new season, did you guys say and kind of group up together and say, we all want to be compensated equal or did it have to, was it like a group package or is everyone kind of different? I honestly don't know. All of us either have agents or managers and based on our contracts of the past and things that we've done, I think there's a lot of layers that go into it. Um, I don't know what everyone gets paid or if we all get paid the same or what, but um, you know. Do you get health insurance? No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> it's definitely not what it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> um sean stort's on the new season how and i saw like a little clip like you're talking to sean stort. how does sean stort end up on the show so heidi and spencer set me up on a blind date with him and they had known him for a long time and heidi you know this will be on the show so they set me up on a blind date with him and at first i wasn't really sure but heidi's my friend that pushes me out of my comfort zone she's like it's time to date come on, it's time. You can't just be alone forever. Just at least go on a date with him. So I was like, okay, I'll go. And he was really funny. He has the best personality. And, you know, it was, we. I mean, I hadn't laughed that much in so long. And then we all went on a double date together. So he's on the show for a little bit. And he definitely brings life and laughter. So what's, what's Audrina's current relationship status? 
currently I am single. Okay. <laughs> um, and how yeah, does Audrina guess... date? Is, is this like a hard, I always, Adam and I love these questions because being famous and dating, I got to imagine adds a whole nother layer of complexity. So how do you date? To be honest, I haven't dated at all until we started filming. Um, and thankfully, like filming and the producers and my friends on the show really were like, come on, it's time. But other than that, especially during COVID the last year, I'm not on dating shows. I'm not going out or dating shows, dating sites, and I'm not going out to meet anyone. So it'll literally just be through mutual friends or that's it, which I have not been on a date. I went on the date with Sean, but since that, like that date, nothing. <laughs> Who's the biggest celebrity you went on a date with that never ended up in the media that we weren't like people didn't know about? Um, I mean Chris Pine. Oh, that's a good, awesome. good one. Knew about yeah, they said a part or a patridge in a pine tree. That was the tag. <laughs> <laughs> when was that? Oh, this was like we were this is whenever his movie just came out and I had just finished Sorority Row. So we were all in Vegas for an award show and I was groomer Willis and the whole cast. And he came up to me and introduced himself to me and gave me his number. And all the girls are kicking me under the table. Like, Oh my God, you don't know who that is. And I'm like, no, like, that's Chris <laughs> I was like, well, he's hot. <laughs> that's so funny. So you guys, how long did you go out for? Yeah, so we hung out a few times. We went on a date. Actually, we hung out more than a few times. Um, and then just, I was filming The Hills all the time, and his career was taking off, and he didn't didn't like the whole paparazzi side of it. And that was my life, was going out, and I was followed by paparazzi. So being on The Hills, it, our lives were completely opposite and just so different with my lifestyle of, filming and what he was more you know a real actor and like like theater actor and loved to read books and jazz music and you know like didn't really like to go out to clubs or or anything like that so and at that time in my life that's all I was doing was going out to clubs because we were filming all the time and around people and um he was a nice guy and you know very charming and gentleman um so it just yeah it just kind of dissipated what was, would you did, would go ahead, Adam? No, I was gonna say, what was like a date like him? Like, what was your most memorable date that you guys went on? Um, we went on a date in, I think Silver Lake, Carlos Viles, and um, we went in his car, which was awesome. He had like an old rabbit, I think, an old convertible, and it was really cool that he had this, you know, older car, and like he was just such into his theater, like his acting, like his. It was really cool, but we went to this Italian restaurant and we went, got a bottle of wine we were at the Italian restaurant. And I remember he ordered black squid pasta. And um, I, at the, mo at the time, didn't really know what that was. And I remember he was eating it and he had black on his lips. When he looked at me, he was like, you're so beautiful. Can I kiss you? And I was like, okay. So I kissed him with the black ink, whatever, I didn't care. <laughs> But that was like, I'll never forget that. And it was a great kiss. <laughs> That's great. Have you guys ran into each other since or anything? No, we kept in touch for a little bit. And that, that was it. I haven't talked to him or seen him in so long. Would you be down to date him again if he was available? I don't. I don't even know if he's available. Or I don't either. I, I, I literally am like, I don't think he's married, but I don't know if he's dating anyone. But would you be down? I, I mean, listen, if, if Hollywood <laughs> Raw became the matchmaker lives. for you. I mean, you never know. Never say never. I'm not opposed to it. <laughs> well, hey, let me ask you this. Like, who was the person that ended up in your DMs, but you're like, man, this is fucking cool. Like, this is a pretty cool one. I can't say. <laughs> Well, they, they could just be a fan. They could just have, you know, just Well, there was appreciate. a lot of different people. And, um, yeah, no, there was like a it. baseball player. I don't remember his name. There was a few musicians, um, comedian. I'm not saying names, though. <laughs> but who was the one who showed up in the DMs? As, not like in a relationship. It was just a fan. That you were like, man, this is, this is pretty cool. Like, they're a fan of this show. Yeah, I mean... 
Oh, like a fan that hit me up. Yeah, it wasn't like a for more. Not like, hey, I want a date, but like, <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy the hills. This is this is. Oh cool. yeah. Um, who was it? Um, Lisa Kudrow. Not oh, on cool. DM, but in person. We were at an event, and she came up to me and said I was her favorite on the hills, and I was like, what? "You're my favorite on <laughs> friends." And we had a moment, and I just love her so much. That's actually really cool to know. Like Lisa Kudrow is watching the hills. I think that's yeah. a that's a really fun. I think she's a super superstar. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it doesn't get much bigger than Friends. No, that so is... I'll never forget that moment. It was really cool. <laughs> yeah. I got to bring up this moment, okay? And, you know, as me, as I'm a street journalist, I, I, you know, that famous moment, it was over, probably over 10 years now, with your mom and the paparazzi. This is when you're on Dance with the Stars. Oh, yeah. It was it was a crazy video, but it wasn't that bad because your mom, it showed how much she supported you and how much she loved you. You know, what was your thoughts on when that happened? Like, part of me is, like, embarrassed. Part of me has got to feel, like, proud that she's, what was your, going through your head when you saw that? I think it's just mixed emotions. My mom is very Italian, very East Coast, so she doesn't care. She'll just, and she talks with her hands a lot. And after a couple glasses of wine, like, everything's just coming out. So, um, with the paparazzi there, I mean, she just, she's so proud and loves me so much. And you know, loves to brag that her baby's a star. And I get it now having a daughter, I would, I would proud, I would be so proud and brag about my daughter and just think she's the best ever too. Like I get it being a mom now, but at the time I was kind of like, Oh my gosh, mom, why'd you do that? It's everywhere, you know? And she was so embarrassed and felt so bad. Um, but it honestly wasn't even bad. It was That's what I think. Like looking back, great. You, you look back mom. and you're like, this is a mother defending her daughter. Like, you know, it yeah. may have been like wild at that moment because everyone was talking about it. But it's at the heart of it. It's a sweet moment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's just reading comments that it's not always the best thing to do where people are just really mean and brutal and that's hurtful. So, but yeah, like people just twist it and turn it into their own thing. And it wasn't bad. Did you give her a no paparazzi talk to yes <laughs> you can't do that i think it was after dancing with the stars and it was a good night i think i got all i we got good scores so we were going out to celebrate we we're having drinks and like celebrating and having fun and they just caught her in that moment what's wow. the craziest uh situation you've ever had with the paparazzi you know i'm sure they're kind of following you around for a while maybe outside your doorstep but you yeah. know what has your been interactions over the years with them I mean, I've had a few. I feel like the paparazzi in London are way more aggressive than here. They would literally jump in the car with me and try to stick cameras up my dress. And they would get in the car. And it was so abrasive and just kind of like, oh, my gosh, this is, like, not right. They don't do that here, thank God. Um, here, they're just more a little invasive where they're just they're following you everywhere. So I learned to give them their shot and then they'll leave. You just turn back and smile. Otherwise, if you keep ignoring, they're gonna keep following you. Um, and one time there was about 20 of them following me in Beverly Hills, my friend Joey and I, and we were shopping and one of them ran into my car and took off and kept going. And another one that I had always seen and became friendly with, I'm like, oh, hey, there you are again. I'd give him his shot, you know? He took off and followed the guy and got his number. And then I gave my dad's number to deal with it because I didn't want to talk to him. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, those are probably two memorable moments that I can think of. Well, that's the wow. point, though. Like, I mean, that's not the point, but that's it's, if you give them what they want, you give them the shot, then they usually kind of go away. You know, it's not worth wasting time after the whole thing. Yeah. Which, I don't want to, I mean, they followed me from LA to Orange County to my parents' house all the time. And I felt bad because I'd pull in the garage and go in and they drove three hours in traffic following me, but I didn't want to be photographed that day. I wasn't in the mood, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm still, I got stuck on the, I can't believe in London, they're sticking cameras up girls' dresses. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. I remember, I remember seeing photos like that years ago and I was just like, what are you going to do with that? Like, you're not going to, you, you're not going to make any money. No one's going to buy that. So like, what are you doing other than looking like a creepo? I All know. right. I want to, I want to jump over. We do this thing called fan question roulette. All right. So we have okay. fans submit questions to us. They have no idea who the celebs that's coming on. They just submit a question, cross their fingers for who it gets read to. So are you down to play fan question roulette with us? Sure. 
All right. <laughs> I, just, I don't know. Any questions? Are I, I honestly have no so idea. So that's the thing is. is, we never know either. <laughs> so I just hope okay. it's not embarrassing for our sake. So yeah. All right. So here's this one is from Sarah. Hello. My question for you: Are you a dog or a cat person? Oh, that was a simple one. I'm both. I have a dog, but I'm actually I'm getting my daughter being a little kitten. So both. Okay. I like it. I like it. All right. I'm going to push the next one. I don't know if you have to push to unmute it or whatever, but here is the next one from Sasha. If you were competing in the Olympics, what sport would you compete in? Swimming. I swam 400 yard freestyle in high school and I was really good at it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Okay. I like it. I like it. All right. So we're going to do a speed round real quick, lastly, and uh, just answer the first thing that pops to your head quick, fast, and just kind of go with it. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right, best restaurant in LA. Catch. All right, most overrated restaurant in LA. I'm gonna say Katsuya. Okay. Okay. Uh, have you ever done a paparazzi setup shot? Yes. <laughs> See, I love the honesty. The amount of celebs that do setup shots, and it's it's good for their career. It's good for the paparazzi. It's, it's like good, good all around. And I don't know why people like shy away from it. So. Thank yeah. you for your honesty. All right. What is your favorite thing about LA? Um, the options and the variety of nightlife and restaurants. The worst thing about living in LA? Traffic. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right. Uh, how about, let's do the most fun person to film with on the hills. Heidi. Okay. Okay. The one person you were surprised, surprised that they brought back on the hills. That they brought back on the hills. Um, I'm not really surprised they brought. There really is no surprises. But okay. I feel like everyone they brought back on needed to be on. All right. How about who would you love to have as a cast member on the hills? Um, who would I love to have as a cast member on the hills? Gosh, uh, da, 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 da. why am I going can for be anyone? Endeavoring? Can be Chris Pine if you want. You know, I'm gonna say, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna say Kristen full time because she's so much fun and brings so much to the show. Okay, okay, good answer. Um, what is your dream job? My dream job is for my swim line to expand into more beach accessories and everything beach culture and just to design and get inspired by traveling the world. How do you like your steak cooked? Medium well. <laughs> we always got to throw a random one in there for you. <laughs> what's, the one, what's the one food that everyone loves but you can't get into? That I can't get into? Uh, caviar. Well, I guess not everyone loves that. I just can't eat caviar. Um, you know, I'm not picky. That's probably why I was on the NBC first look show because I <laughs> ate everything. <even> bugs. <laughs> what is your greatest achievement? Being a mother. Oh, that's good cute. answer. Good, well, Adrena, good answer. Listen, you're awesome. I really appreciate you coming on the podcast. Appreciate you being honest. Uh, and I'm excited to see you on the new season of The Hills, True Beginnings. I loved you on first watch. I've seen you do your acting and you're, you're a good actress. I've seen you act on reality TV. I've seen you act on movies. So <laughs> it's, I've uh... seen you scream at porta potties. So I love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, you, you guys have seen it all. <laughs> yeah. But it's because in some ways, I actually feel like I, we, you know, in some ways, I feel like I grew up with you. And I think that's a really cool part. I think that's why we resonate with you so much. So Thank you for coming on the podcast. I recommend everyone follow her on Instagram because she's a fun follow. And uh, it's cool to see what she's up to next. And check her out in the new season of The Hills, uh, New Beginnings. Aldrina, thank you very much for coming on the podcast. Yeah, thank you, guys. It's always a pleasure. Good seeing you again. Thank <laughs> you. Next okay. time, maybe at a different porta potty. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Dude, Chris Pine? <laughs> that, this is this was a great interview. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't know what to expect out of Audrina. I mean, she has been famous for a very long time. Way more honest than I think I thought she would be. Yes. Yes. Right. I agree. 
Um, I agree. She was cool. She was honest. Uh, and I appreciate that, especially in a world where like, I feel like her, her people sometimes like sometimes if there are people are, are in the room, they would not like to say that those like to answer those questions, but she was mm -hmm. cool. I mean, I love the stories, how she got on the show and it's honestly, it's like the old school story. Like she was just spotted. She was just found. And, uh, I listen, it's, I love the Hills. It's a great show. It's shot. Well, the music with it, it's visually very pretty. It's, uh, it's it's a good show, so I'm excited to see the new season. I even like the last season. I don't know why Misha Barton was on the show. She brought nothing to it. And I don't <laughs> think that's the reason why reason why she's not in the new season. But uh, Audrina is very cool, and again, she's been on. She's uh, she's the cast member who's been on the Hills the most out of any other cast member. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, is that like a longest... documented actual yeah, thing, or are you just making the... that shit up? No, no, she is. She uh, she is. I just got, by the way, someone just sent me. A, guess who? I just got a text message. Nose phone number I just got. Who? Kirsty Alex. Should we have her get on the podcast? That she has me blocked on Twitter. Um, I don't think she's no, a fan. No, does she? Yeah. Wow. But you know what? I also have her French fries that I bought at her garage sale that one time. And that's Christmas true. stocking. So she that's, might not like me because I went through all of her old crap in the front yard and bought it and then <laughs> tweeted about it. <laughs> that could be it. So I, then I'll do the text messaging for her. Uh, Thank you, Audrina, for coming on the podcast. Make sure you follow her on Instagram and make sure you check out the new season of The Hills, New Beginnings. You can find this whole interview, the video portion on YouTube. We have all the video there, so you can check it out. Um, we're also on TikTok, Instagram, uh, Facebook, all that stuff. You can find me at, at Adam Glenn on all social media platforms. You can find Dax Holt at, at Dax Holt, H-O-L-T. Uh, and we'll see you guys. Uh, we got some good stuff coming up, so we'll see you guys later.